Hey folks, it's Blake. Um, taking another look at the continuous run simple robot arm that I've been uh, experimenting with. So I'm just going to fire it up here and we'll notice what we see. So a few things. One, we were able to get it to go in most cases, right? We have a couple of these bots which are cranking away, right? We got this guy got 60 points and counting. This one has four points and is kind of stuck. And a lot of them get stuck over time. There are some edge cases where this machine learning algorithm hasn't figured out uh, how to accommodate things. But in a lot of other cases, again, it's well past 100 and is doing you know, far superior to any human possibly could in this game. So we're getting there. Um, I think it could just benefit from a little bit more training. Um, I did have to make a couple of modifications to my code. One of the modifications that I made was that I went away from using Unity's built-in collider system and I went over to doing a direct distance calculation. And so I'll show you what that looks like here. So when the game starts, I figure out what the touch distance is based on the size of the hand and the size of the target. And then I divide that by two because I want the radius, not the diameter. And then I just do a distance calculation based on that touch distance. And the reason I did this is because Unity Colliders, with the way they executed, they calculate based on when something enters or leaves the collider. What was happening in a very few occasions was that the target was actually getting spawned inside of the hand. So it was a, a very rare thing, but it was happening. And so when the target was getting spawned inside the hand, the machine learning algorithm would leave the hand where it was because it was in the correct position, because it was in the correct position. Um, but the uh, collider system wasn't noticing the hand entering that collision because the hand was surrounding the target. So by using that collider system, the cases where the target was spawned inside the hand, which is kind of a freebie, um, but it wasn't getting picked up. So again, we're continuing to run. We got this guy up here, 46 points. It's stuck uh, where it is, um, but even still at 46, I mean, that's way better than a, a person would do with this game. Uh, I have learned about TensorBoard um, and highly recommend TensorBoard uh, be used. It helps give a lot better insight. Um, I also created this just quick, super st stupid startup batch file that just fires up the Jupyter Notebook, the TensorBoard, and also uh, opens a web browser to TensorBoard. Um, but this shows what's been going on with my machine learning algorithm. So this is the training curve. Looks really, really good. You'll see that there are some, you know, spikes and some troughs that happened here. One of the things that I did this week, after I made the previous video this week, I went back and I updated everything. I got the GPU working on this, which it's actually using surprisingly little GPU power. I got the GPU working. I also updated uh, my GitHub repository based off of Unity's master. I was about 26 commits behind or something, so I think that there was a bunch of bug fixes in there that may have helped me out because this behavior is significantly different than the behavior that I was seeing prior to these updates. Um, the entropy, so this is how much randomization is being <laughs> going on, so it starts high and then it gets less and less random as the algorithm learns. The episode length is solid stable. That is because the episode length is fixed uh, in this scenario based on a time limit, right? Um, so it's not based on skill. So the, this is always the same. The learning rate, this should decrease over time. That's what it should do, right? You start at a high learning rate and then as you get closer and closer, you reduce your learning rate um, so that you approach zero. I went for five million iterations. That looks to be about right. I could have done about the same at four million, but you know, for an extra 20%, I got 
you know, a little bit better, a little bit of improvement. Um, this info, this policy loss, this is supposed to oscillate. I don't have a lot of detail about specifically uh, what that is. And then both the value estimates and the value loss, these should coincide roughly with the cumulative reward. So these three should be roughly the same. The centropy should be decreasing like it is, and this learning rate, again, should go from your max value down to zero over the duration of your run. So all of these look beautiful. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see them, and it's nice to have that TensorBoard functionality uh, built into TensorFlow. I'm not a TensorFlow person. So again, I'm learning a lot about this too. I'm a Unity developer, game developer, and researcher, not a TensorFlow guy. Um, so this looks great again. So we get these guys that get stuck. And even if I just wiggle, all right, so I'm going to go from 0.00, or 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.02165 to 0, 0.0215, and oh, everything just reset. Um, let me hit that timer again. All right, so we're going to look at this target. All right, we're going to see if by jiggling it some just tiny amount, so I'm going to move it um, one one thousandth or so. No, that wasn't enough. Oh, yeah, I moved up much more than that that time. Um, all right, let's move it a hundredth. Or hold on, let's wait until we get one of these guys to jam. The point here being, there we go. There's one that's jammed. Uh, we'll move it a hundredth. No. Nope. Not enough. For a lot of these, it only takes, of course it's not doing it now because I'm recording, um, it only takes a slight adjustment to unstick these. So there's a few things that we can do. One is additional training. I think that's uh, going to be fine. Like this one is just bouncing it between two values. If I move this up, boom. And then it's off to the races again. It would have been stuck forever, and now it's going to have you know a few dozen points, uh, if not more. Um, so one thing is to just do that. So the other thing that's interesting, though, is we can actually make, I think, the problem what a human would call harder, right, by having the target move around a little bit, and then that would stay out of these dead zones. Again, I'm doing this for entertainment purposes largely um, until I get in further into doing this with real robots because I would love to pair this with a real robot. Um, I don't have one handy, um, but I can talk to some folks about that, see what I can do. If not, I can also just build myself a little poppy or something. Um, but this is working really well. Uh, the training has been a lot more stable. It's only using three to seven percent of my GPU power, which I thought was interesting. And the GPU TensorFlow on GPU, I find, is not as stable as a CPU. That code actually crashed a few times. It was having trouble allocating things. Um, I don't know if it's because, um, you know, I accidentally had an active desktop running, which I have turned off. Um, at this point in time, or if Unity is open at the same time, maybe there's some resource contention or something causing it to not allocate right. But I have found that any time uh, the TensorFlow stuff crashes, does a hard crash, I basically have to restart my machine. So I've been restarting my computer a lot more. Um, so I'm not sure. I want to do a race one of these days between the CPU code and the GPU code for this, because I think the simulation is kind of a limiting factor on how quickly this goes. Um, that's not a, you know, today or this week thing, uh, but I, I do think that's coming up. So the next thing I'm going to do, um, I'm going to move, first of all, I'm going to take the TensorFlow parameters that I used. I'm going to put them in the description of this video. So if you're wondering what my hyperparameters were, I'm going to provide those to you. Um, the next thing is going to be to add another, uh, armature so that we're going to have, um, uh, rotate and two bends. Um, so that we can uh, really start going from something that feels like a toy, because it is a toy, you know, it's a learning toy, and then we're going to go to something a little more real. So we're going to use a lot of the same code. 
We're going to duplicate it. You know, the target, I think, is going to behave identically to the current target does. The first rotator, the first bender are going to behave identically. Um, the second bender is going to add a lot of range. Um, and so the only thing, so I'm going to have to do that. Oh, no, okay, so the target is going to have to change because the spawn locations of the target are going to change as well. The target is going to be able to spawn anywhere within a unit hemisphere. So that's kind of where I am. That's what I'm up to. Uh, just wanted to show this. If anybody has any questions or anything, leave them in the comments below. Uh, happy to help as much as I can. Um, again, stuff is available on GitHub. I'll try to remember to put that link in the comments along with the hyper parameters. Have a good one out there.